Ladies and gentlemen of the Jungle Squad, it is time for one of my favorite YouTube things, a commentary card. Now let me tell you about commentary cards before we dive right in. We're going to play a trials card. We're going to talk through what we're doing and why. It happens all the time where people come into my chat, I mean many times per day, and ask me for tips. Hey, what should I do to get better at trials? And the first thing I recommend is to check out my commentary card playlist. It's a playlist on YouTube. This video will be a part of it where I kind of try to dissect while I'm in game what I'm doing and why. It's not easy to play really well and try to discuss out loud what's happening, what to do, why I'm doing it. But I will do my best to break down exactly what I'm up to, put you in the mind of the person who has more flawlesses than anybody in the world. We're going to also talk a little bit about this like new meta, this new special ammo all that stuff. So let's load in. We'll talk through a lot of stuff while we do it. Let's begin. All right. So one thing I will say as we're about to load into our first game is this is a very unique way for trials to play in the sense that you spawn in with special ammo. But once you run out of special ammo, you're out for a while. The only way to get more ammo is to get a bunch of kills or assists. Even dying gives you a little bit of progress on your ammo bar. Because of this, I'm kind of feeling double primary as a meta a little bit. I don't know if it's a glitch in how little special you get. The TWAB, TWID, whatever you want to call it, said 38% per kill, but three kills do not give you more special. So I kind of think they bugged that. What I will tell you is throwing on special on round one until you waste it all is totally sensible. And then swapping a double primary is a very good play. Keep in mind, this is important. Make sure the weapons that you do use cover all the range in the game. When people put on two, like, auto rifles and you've only got mid-range weapons it doesn't make very much sense if you put on two scouts it doesn't make very much sense you're gonna want to at least put on weapons that cover all the ranges so you can fight long range and close range for example this allows me to fight close range Ooh, that's a good nade all right so i'm super weak i want to take cover hopefully my teammate goes and protects that res and he did which is perfect <gasps> Okay, he's one shot. Unless he lands a miracle shotgun shot, we're good. Obviously, when you're when he's that weak and you've got revives near you, the play is to push your revives. Take advantage of the opportunity. You have a moment there while they're so one shot to take advantage of the situation and get a revive. You're either going to get that kill or they're going to hide and you're going to get a revive. Don't stand around and let them get their health back. Do something productive while they're that weak. Fizz in chat says I think it might be a glitch. I think it is a glitch. Ooh, I'm out of ammo. So now that I'm out of ammo, I'm going to swap to different weapons. We now we've got Igneous for the mid to long range and last word for the close range. And I'm just going to keep it like that the rest of the game. I agree, dude. I think it might be a glitch. I think we're supposed to get more ammo per kill than we get. Because it said 38%, which would mean three kills is ammo, but three kills is not ammo. Before people ask... I'm using Echo of Vigilance. That's what gives me an overshield when I get a kill while weak. I can show you my subclass actually after this match. I'll break it down a little bit for you. And we'll try to keep talking through what I'm doing and why. I'm going to go for the far left angle here because I know I can get to safety if I'm in danger. And we might be able to sneak a kill before they're ready for me. We got a kill. I don't want to jump. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to jump up on this unless I can get back if I'm in danger. And we're good. I will tell you, friends, that my play style is extremely dependent on the Wormhusk dodge. Okay, last word. He should die. That works. You can't play the exact way I play on Titan and Warlock, or even on Hunter without this uh, exotic. But I'll break it down, my build a little bit b b uh, between matches. I will tell you, you can be pretty close to my kind of play style with any subclass, but my ability to kind of push into a fight knowing I've got my dodge... And knowing that if I'm in danger, I can just click dodge and get into safety. That allows me to make some pushes that are a little bit more dangerous than you should normally make. I'm not even going to waste my dodge because I'm in safety. A lot of people would use their Wormhust dodge there, but there's no reason to. I'm already in safety. Oh, God. There's a guy on the right. Okay. We're in a nice little 3v1 here. And I used my dodge because I was in danger when I used it. So now oh, he's got a shotgun. You see that white light? That means I am not going to run out that door and risk getting shotguns. Knowing what the enemy has can influence how you play. If that dude has a sniper, I can push right at him. He's got nothing to just one hit kill me and punish me. Because I saw he had a shotgun, I need to not play point blank range with him. I don't want to get punished for that. 
Meanwhile, I'll tell you why I just two tap this guy. Because it's a strong, strong, strong combo. Nice game, one. Uh, friends, Golden Tricorn is a perk where if you get a kill, sorry, a kill, you get bonus damage. And on your artifact this season, you've got something that gives you Radiance, which gives you bonus damage if you land three headshots with an Igneous. Three headshots with an Igneous plus Golden Tricorn will allow you to two tap the next Guardian. So, Chad, I am using the, or YouTube, the Wormhusk Crown. It is my favorite exotic in the game. Dodging gives some health and shield. On Hunters, your mobility is linked to your dodge. The higher mobility, the more often you can dodge. Also, if you use the Marksman Dodge, you get your cooldown faster. We've got aspects of Silas Execution and Vanishing Step. Vanishing Step's good because often I'm in danger when I dodge, and going invis will make it so they're not going to have as easy of a time finding me. So this gives me a little bit of camo while I'm trying to get my health back. Uh, fragments are Void of Expulsion, which is a little bit of extra intellect. Plus, I sometimes get Void Weapon or Void uh, Nade Kills, and then they explode. We got Dilation, simply for the mobility and the intellect. Obscurity simply for the recovery and then vigilance even though it's negative 10 recovery that overshield after you get kills can be super helpful Spike nades. I love using against walls people who are in cover You can throw this behind them on the wall and just kick their butt smokes Straight jump using tether because it's the smallest cooldown on super more likely to get it than these two and yeah 10 mobility so I can dodge as much as possible 10 recovery so I can get back in the fights as much as possible resilience not very needed on hunter Focus more on mobility and recovery, in my opinion. This is PvP, not PvE. Titans should have resilience in both PvE and PvP. And that's the build. All right, remember, round one, there's much more abilities, much more special. You have to be a little bit more nervous about running at them because everyone's locked and loaded on special and abilities. So I like to play a little bit more distance when I remember to. Sometimes I just autopilot at people. But I like to play a little bit more distance so I don't get just hit by a world of abilities on round one. Okay, our job now is to stop that revive. Whenever you get a res down in Trials... Ugh, bad timing to say that. But heal clip, kill clip will allow me to kill this guy for sure. What is happening over here? Whenever you get a revive, a res in Trials, strategy is now a thing. Once there's a res down, now there are things to strategically be thinking about. Your goal when you get the enemy team down is to protect that revive. You don't ever want to give up on it unless you have to. If you're one shot and trying to cover that res will mean you die, then let them get the revive. It's not worth giving your life for it. But it's your goal to keep them off of it. Same vice versa. If you're someone on your team's dead, your goal is to push them away so you can get the revive. Now I got no range, so I kind of have to be going towards people. Trying to help out my teammate. Nice. By the way, what I did at the start of that round was my teammate was in the fight. So I jumped in. That's a real simple one, but my god do people mess that up. When people on your team are near you and fighting someone, help them. I can't tell you how many times people on my squad that I'm carrying will just kind of watch me fight and think, I hope he wins. Meanwhile, if they give you free heavy, take it. There's no reason not to grab that. Machine guns cook. By the way, I recommend after the update, people try machine guns. Seriously though, something as simple as what I suggested can be night and day in people's gameplay. When your teammate is nearby you and fighting someone and you're full health, you got to get involved. Even if you don't kill them, even if you just take some damage, you might help your teammate survive. You don't know if your teammate's winning or losing that fight. You just getting hit a little bit could be the difference in your teammate surviving. Okay, they're all pushing mid, so I want to go and help. We're in must dodge to get out of dodge you know what i'm saying he's trying to shoot my smoke so we can maybe take advantage of that spike need go behind him if he backs up he's dead oh i thought i was behind cover we're in a 2v1 though my teammates are probably going to be fine here there we go as i said before this game 5-0 games there's a lot less strategy to talk through if we're absolutely melting people it's a little bit harder to commentary card in ways that are super important. But I hope you're still getting good information from this. All right. Game three. Again, kind of want to talk about weapon choices. Forerunner's incredible at range. Helio's incredible at close range. The two together means I got all range covered. When I'm out of special, I'll often swap to Igneous, which is incredible mid to long range. And Last Word, which is incredible short range. That way, no, no matter where somebody's at, I've got a weapon that can deal damage to them. All right. Round one. Lots of abilities and special weapons and stuff. I probably shouldn't be as close as I am. But I got mine, and I got Helio, too. Okay, they're up top. There's one in middle. What the heck is that, dude? So, Wormhusk gives you health, right? You know what else gives you health? Heal clip. Q 
cure times two when you dot or when you reload and the dodge reload activates this so i'm both worm husk health back and heal clip health back so i can go from a fight to immediately the next fight with tons of benefits i didn't use any abilities or special either so i've got that in favor i see this guy's weak and in a fight so i expected him to give me a chance to get that pick noticing that they were in a fight means he's not going to be focused on me that means I can just check it out, wait for him to kind of move forward or backwards, and I'll be there to pick up the kill. If I run at that guy, I risk getting shot from the side. Because I have a long-range weapon, just sticking it out and waiting for him was the play there. Okay, two in the back. Heal clip, kill clip allows me to push forward a little bit. That guy's weak. That's gonna kill me. Good nade. Good trip mine. Now we just gotta hope our gamer wins the 1v1, and he does. Hey, very, very simple but important note, by the way. This is important and maybe more important than any advice you could ever get in PvP. Play cover. What do I mean by that? Be near things like this. A lot of people make the huge mistake of going out into the open and having no escape if they're in danger. Like right there, if I had just run here and I start getting shot, where do I go? What do I do? I'm only going to move into a position like that with no cover if I have the advantage. If they're weak and I'm full health. A lot of people make the mistake of running like right there. Where you can get shot from the whole map and you have absolutely no cover. Always try to put yourself in a spot where if things go bad, you can get into cover. Cool. GG's. And seriously, that is like the most important thing in Crucible. Every fight. I'm not even thinking about it. It's just second nature. I'm thinking about where on the radar the enemies are. Now I know, okay, if I'm here and they're here, these objects are between us. These objects serve as cover. Because you got to recognize where you are and where the enemy is. Cover is going to change based off of where your positions are. Something that might block an angle won't block it if they're behind you. So recognize where the enemy is, where you are, what serves as cover, and you have to play near that. If you deal some damage to the other player, don't get too caught up in that and just commit to the fight and die. Even if you've weakened them, if they've weakened you, it's probably the best play to just take cover. Unless you are confident you are going to win that gunfight, prioritize surviving. All right, so we're going into a game against a very good looking duo. Believe it or not, that's actually important to recognize going into the match. That means these two are probably going to be communicating to each other and being better teammates than just a bunch of random solos together. So recognizing that when you're weak, they're probably calling it out to one another. When they're weak, they're probably letting their teammate know, hey, I'm weak, watch my back. So just recognizing that they've got a good teammate with them can help you kind of play it differently. Okay, that spike might help out. I got two dudes weak right now, but I am the solo. Let's go, got that nade. So I can't call it out to the squad. Putting a smoke there to mess him up. And there is a revive here, but I think he's too weak to go for it. He is. Let's go. Awesome. I also have a good duo. So sim everything I just talked about is the same on my team too. Recognizing there's going to be a little bit more coordination with my squad. Can allow me to maybe make pushes or take angles I didn't expect to. Just knowing that my teammates are going to be a little bit more together and smart about stuff. Hey, Swift, congrats on the flawless, dude. 292s. But he's going to take cover. Oh, almost got him. And immediately, use cover, swap weapons. I'm out of special. I'm giving up on special for the rest of the game. I've got my last word for close range. Oh, nice. You got a pick. I got my igneous for long range. Only one enemy is left. One minute left my there is a res somewhere over on the bridge. I remember the first pick was not in a spot that I know, so I'm trying to find it. If I go left, that means he can't take cover. So friends, we had a guy shooting at this dude on the right. A lot of players would just go to the right and take the same angle. Don't do that. Go to the left. Now that guy can't take, he can't get away. A lot of people think helping your teammate means standing right next to him. So often, it can mean helping surround the enemy. Put yourself in the enemy's shoes. If two people are running at you, you can run away. If people are surrounding you, you panic. You're like, where do I go? One well, must dodge, get the health back. And just got him. Okay, dude behind me. I'll put a smoke here in case he runs at me, but I'm in a bad spot. There's just kind of nothing I can do besides do my damage and hope I survive. Oh, why does that melee not lunge? That melee should have lunged and I should have traded there, but that's not too big of a deal. Yeah, my teammates are goaded this game. Dude, teammates got a pick again? 
This guy's weak. Let's see if that nade will get him. Yeah, it will. Very nice. Another 5-0. Look at us go. Commentary card going great thus far. Still no crazy rounds to commentate, but I still think we've probably put out a lot of really, really good information. If you are enjoying this, please, the number one favor you can do for me is subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, and also share it with people. Do you have anybody in your clan that wants to get better at PvP? Anybody who's scared to play Trials? Anybody on your friends list who you want to play Trials with who just doesn't like the playlist? Like, share this with them. The whole point of these videos is to try to be as friendly with newer PvP players, less new, even some of the more veteran PvP players. I try to just talk through what I do in hopes that any experienced player can learn a little. So the number one thing to do is just like it, subscribe, and maybe share it with someone. If you're enjoying it. All right, we got three bubble titans. Oh my God. Okay, one's long range on the right. I don't want to get engaged in that fight though because I'll get pushed from the left if I'm not careful. That dude should win. Oh yeah. Okay, we got heal clip, kill clip. Let's go. Woo, I thought I was going to win that fight. I committed because I felt confident. Kind of going to my whole conversation about taking cover from earlier. If I was losing that fight or doubtful that I was going to win, taking cover is the play there. But I felt good about winning that, even though I got a little nervous. I'm going to jump in the middle. Take a different angle for my teammates. We can have multiple angles on outside guard gamers now. Although nobody's taking an outside angle, so I'm going to slide back in. Forerunner, baby. Very good. Waiting for my teammates. I don't need to overextend without them. If they're running this way, though, I'm going to try to get in there and help. Nice. Playing off your teammates in solo trials can be really important. Are your teammates running at the enemies? Help them. Are your teammates standing near the zone and trying to protect the zone? You probably don't want to run at the enemies all on your own. You probably want to defend with your teammates. Okay, we got to get out of here. We got a lot of abilities on people. Hope it can help. We're now suppressed. Cool. Let's reload. Our dude's hopefully... Yeah, he's taking the cover. Or he's taking the fire. Perfect. But playing around your teammates is something you can absolutely do in Trials that a lot of people don't do. They go into the games with a game plan. They're like, I've got shotgun. I'm going to be aggressive. And then their teammates aren't. And they're pissed at their teammates. Why aren't they pushing with me? Or the opposite. They're like, I got a scout rifle. I'm going to sit back. And then their teammates push. And they're like, why aren't they, why aren't they sitting back, dude? Being able to adjust... This twin guy is killing it. Being able to adjust to your teammates is like a super crucial thing for trying to be consistent in trials. A lot of people think, ah, man, like I won two games and then lost the third game because my teammates are so bad. And sometimes that's true. But maybe the third game, they didn't play the same way as you. And you could have adjusted, but you didn't. Okay, I have no long range anymore, so I'm going to take cover and swap. This allows me to have the close and the long range once again, even without special. We have zone control. So they have to come to us. So as a result, I'm not going to push in. Now, a lot of people would have overextended for that kill. But I looked at radar. I saw that they were in the middle. So even though that guy was one shot, and a lot of you watching probably would have ran in there and tried to kill him. Okay, I don't know why he's not taking damage. I saw radar. I saw both the enemies were in there. If I run in for this kill, I'm going to get shot by both of them. And although I might get the one kill, I'm dead. 100%. So that's a really good example of trying to pay attention to like what's happening around you. And making decisions about pushing or not based on it. If there's no one on radar, I am pushing that guy. Because he's one shot. I'm not. I'm going to win that. But because there's two teammates right there up for him, it's not worth dying to get that kill. Not to me, it's not. Alrighty, dudes. Back to round one, so I threw on a special weapon. Again, round one, you gotta think about they all have abilities and special, and it's a little bit more chaotic and dangerous at the beginning. So I'm gonna try to play a little bit smarter as a result. I've got one teammate coming out with me, and they're all going in, it looks like. And we got the rotator up, we got zone control. So they have to make their move towards us. So we get to play a little defensive now. It would be a bad play to run at them. There's no reason to. But... Trying to protect my teammates who are in the fight is necessary. Oh god, the timing on that smoke. Okay, we're good. We're good. So recognizing you don't need to run at them, they have to come to us. Important. Recognizing your teammates are in a fight, so you've got to try to get in. Because you yourself are full health there, and your teammates might not be. Get in there, take some of the damage from them. Good job on the pick teammate. 
Okay, sidearms melt the titan walls. So there's no reason for me to just jump over there and risk getting shotguns. But yeah, that spot, there's four seconds left on the revive. Like, that dude just died. Sidearms melt the titan walls. And we got two teammates with us. No reason to jump over and risk getting shotguns. Stay back and just melt the shield. Okay, I'm not going to take that angle again. Okay, now two of them are tagged. And we're hoping a teammate can help out, and they do. Take cover while weak. Let your teammates take over. See, this guy did have a shotgun. That was a bad play. I should have recognized that and backed up. But, total honesty, I did not think he was just going to run out in front of all three of us. So, while it did lead to my death, it was a really stupid play on his part. So, I kind of played around him not making that play. Heavy ammo around, so we want to try to protect this area. I'm going to go left. See if I can help get an angle for the squad. They got him on a 2v1, so we're fine. Ooh, he's weak. See if this nade will help. That guy should be busy on the right. I was going to try to get the dude on the left while that dude was distracted, but... Zoinks! We've had a couple of these games, or a couple of these, uh, yeah, these games in this card, where the teammates have a good head on their shoulders. They recognize when I'm in fights. We kind of play things together. Like, I hear that my teammate's weak, so my job is to go and protect him. And now that I'm this one shot, I got to keep cover. Oh, my teammate's running in, so I'm going to try to help him. Good job, Zoinks. So that's another example of playing with your teammate. If he did not run in, I was going to get our free revive. There's a free revive right there. And in general, when you got a free revive, like a revive you know you're going to get in safety, in general, get it. But in that spot, there was only one enemy left, and my teammate was running at him. If I run at him too, we're going to win. There ain't no way he's killing both of us. So in that unique position, I'm running in with my teammate. If my teammate had played a little slower, I'm getting the free revive. So what my teammate does affects what I do. So often, people will come into my chat and talk about how their teammates did everything wrong. You probably don't realize that you've got the power to make your teammates' plays better. Jake, if we don't have Igneous, what are some other primary loadouts that can cover short and long ranges? Oh, dude, there's literally infinite combos. Sidearms and SMGs are very good close-range weapons. Auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles are very good long-range weapons. You can combine any of those things for the most part. Hand cannons, even. You honestly could combine so many different combos to get good long and close-range combos. Like, these work. You could use Adjudicator and Emit. That's close and long range. Like, there's a there's so many combos. All right, we got two strand dudes on our team. There's already a guy up top. I, we kind of screwed up and just gave them map control here. So we have to play it really, really weird now and just kind of see if one of them will mess up. Okay, we got to get out of here. This is a perfect time to worm us and just rotate. My teammate's kind of caught outside. I want to watch and see if I can protect him in case they push him. We do have to figure out a way to get to zone. So we're in a bad spot here just because we didn't push immediately. I want to take a different angle from my teammates and make this harder for the enemies, but we will have to push soon. Okay, I'm suppressed, so I can't dodge. There we go. We made it work. So if one of my dudes gets on the zone, we can't, can't lose this. I made a unique decision there. I stayed here while my two teammates rotated. If I rotate with them, then we all are going through the same choke point. It's really easy for the enemies to all stare at that middle door and shoot us if we appear. But if I stay on that angle, now they're split. They have to figure out, are we looking right? Are we looking left? Where are we looking? It's going to put them in a tougher spot. Saw he was in a fight. Figured I can get the angle. We're going to worm us dodge. That will over this week. See if we can get a little extra damage without them knowing. Ooh. Yeah, baby. Let's go. But like little decisions like that on the spot can be huge. Staying on your own is dangerous. Don't get me wrong. If the enemy team all decided, hey, there's one guy on the side. We're going to all run at him. I would have been screwed. But we're playing solos. That's what I meant about checking out who you're playing. Are you playing solos or are you playing duos? Because they're all solos, the ability for them to communicate is much worse. They're probably not going to all 3, 2, 1 push me at the same time. If I'm in the trios playlist... I'm probably not going to want to sit off on my own like that because they all might say, hey, this guy's alone and push me. Okay, not going to waste my dodge. I can get to safety and heal. I want to use my dodge when I'm more mid-fight and not able to get to cover. Dude on my team dead, so I need to get to my teammate and try to help him with his fight. We need to back up. See if we can help him. We might even be able to get the res, but we're going to give up the zone if we do. So let's pay attention. I don't want to get the res. I don't want to give up this res and the zone. I want to keep my angle. 
And we're just going to figure out a way to one at a time destroy him with this Helio. Almost snagged that. Spike Nade might get him if he's right there. He's not. While they're this weak, though, we can get free heavy. I don't like leaving my teammates alone, but grabbing free heavy is a good idea. That was almost dangerous. Okay, let me get my health back, and I'm volatile. I'm coming, gamer! Good, he's getting the revive. I'm trying to see which angle they're going to come from. Okay, I think I figured out which angle they're coming from. That worked out. Are we one round away from a flawless? I think we are. We got four runner ammo still, so we can hold this outside pretty well. There's one up top. I'm just going to take cover for a sec. I want to help my teammates, but I don't want to just overextend and die. I don't have my dodge either, so I want to wait. Heal clip, kill clip, baby. So... Hold on a second. Are we flawless? I have to ask you, YouTube and chat. Did I just go 35-0 and 0 in my solo commentary card? You did just check trials report? There ain't no way, dude. There ain't no way. If you enjoyed the commentary card, please click like on the video. Consider sharing it with friends, and please consider coming to Twitch. We've got Twitch drops during Guardian games. You can literally get a medallion, a diamond one, by just watching a Twitch stream. So if you don't have an account, make it. It's free. Turn on the Twitch stream. Watch for two hours. You can even lurk. Just keep it on on a tab on the side. Earn a medallion. Support the stream. Maybe win emblems. We gave away a bunch today. Maybe win a trials carry. We did a bunch today. Come to Twitch. Check out the channel. We're live all weekend, every weekend, doing trials help. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching on YouTube.